begin this evening in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, grace to you and peace from God our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Monday Thursday service typically begins with a sermon. So I'd like to offer with you some of my thoughts as we begin this last three-day journey towards the celebration of Easter. Tonight we turn our attention to the very last meal that Jesus had with his closest followers. It's a meal that proclaims the deep love that he has for everybody. Uh, his, his intention to be present with his disciples and his followers for centuries to come, and the commitment that Jesus has to offering each and every one of us the gift of forgiveness and the promise of eternal life. And I'm so glad that given all that surrounds us in the world today and all the danger and uncertainty that we're perhaps a bit more aware of these days than we often are, I'm so glad that we have the opportunity tonight to gather to celebrate with this worship service. And even though we're participating from many different locations, I have a, a strong sense of us being together in this moment. And that's a, that's a powerful experience that I know many of you have shared with me over the past couple of weeks and for which we find ourselves very grateful. A number of people have asked me what it's like for me to be here in this room all by myself during our times of worship. And it really is a kind of a strange feeling, especially on a a dark evening like this to look around and, and see nothing in the worship center here at St. Peter but empty chairs. But we recently did some research into an ancient manuscript that suggests that Jesus himself may have had a very similar experience as what I'm having here tonight. In fact, in that manuscript, there's a painting of what his last supper with his followers may actually have looked like. And uh, hopefully you could see that painting on your screen right now. Um, of course, we're just kidding. I rather doubt that Jesus had a Skype opportunity together with his followers on that Monday, Thursday evening. Um, but it, it lifts up the notion of, of being together. And, and one of the things that I'd like to raise up this evening is that there is this sense that we are united. You and I are with people like Peter and James and John and people who throughout all the years have been united by their experience of Christ. You know, we may not have been in the same room with Jesus on Maundy Thursday, and, and we may not have even lived at the same time, but we're all united with God's faithful people across the centuries and across the continents. It's something that the church has come to describe as the communion of saints. And the question before us tonight is, is what is it that unites us? And, and the answer to the question, very simply, is it's the grace that we have received in Christ. It's the forgiveness that's been given to us by God as a gift. It's the promise of reconciliation and new life that we have received. And all of this comes to us from Christ, whose sacrificial love for us is remembered every year during this holy week. I do miss having you here in the worship center. And tonight, what I also miss is one of the very unique aspects of this Monday Thursday service. And you'll remember that each year, following our confession of sins, we invite you to approach the altar and receive personal absolution. The assisting minister or I will, will lay our hands upon your head and will proclaim this good news, we'll say, in obedience to the command of our Lord Jesus Christ. I forgive you all your sin. In that moment, we're bold enough to speak on behalf of God, assuring you that at the heart of God's intention for each one of us is the, does, the, is the desire for us to experience what it's like to be fully forgiven, to experience what it's like to be absolutely absolved. In obedience to the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. Ultimately, this is what unites us as Christians, not the way in which we worship and not the particular doctrines that our tribe has ascribed to over the years and not even the work that's been entrusted to us by God, but it's the gift of God's forgiveness. It's the experience of being fully forgiven and absolutely absolved that unites us as brothers and sisters in this faith. In Christ, we have the promise of a new beginning that we experience every year in a very moving way during this evening's service and the personal absolution that we receive. 
But it's also a promise, you know, that accompanies us throughout the rest of the year. You know, it's said that Martin Luther, in his life, began every single day in the very same way. As soon as he awoke, he would mark himself with the sign of the cross. And for him, that was a way for him to remember the promises of his baptism. And he would recall God's gift of forgiveness for him and give thanks for the grace of this gift from God. He began every day that way. And he, I suspect that he would encourage us to do exactly the same thing. To begin each of our days remembering that God is one who loves us enough to become one of us in Christ. And who, during the days of this most holy week, gives himself to us on our behalf, that we might experience the new life that God wants us to know. Tonight, I won't be able to lay my hands upon you and speak those words directly and personally to each one of you. But it's still important for us on this Monday, Thursday, to share with one another these words of forgiveness and renewal. So, so let us prepare once again to hear these important and life-giving words by listening to the Holy Week Declaration. These are the words that each year conclude our Monday Thursday sermon. And for some of you, these will be very familiar words. In this Lenten season, we have heard our Lord's call to intensify our struggle against sin, death, and the devil, all that keeps us from loving God and each other. This is the struggle to which we were committed at baptism. God's forgiveness and the power of the Spirit to amend our lives continue with us because of God's love for us in Jesus, our Savior. Within the community of the church, God never wearies of giving peace and new life. In the words of absolution, we receive forgiveness as if directly from God. This absolution we should not doubt, but firmly believe that thereby our sins are forgiven before God in heaven, for it comes to us in the name and by the command of our Lord. We who receive God's love in Jesus Christ are called to love one another, to be servants to each other as Jesus became our servant. So let's offer ourselves to each other in service this evening as we share these words of forgiveness, these words of absolution. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us make confession to God. Almighty, Almighty God, God merciful, merciful Father, I, a troubled and penitent sinner, confess to you all my sins and iniquities with which I have offended you and for which I justly deserve your punishment. But I am sorry for them and repent of them and pray for your boundless mercy. For the sake of the suffering and death of your Son, Jesus Christ, be gracious and merciful to me, forgive my sins, give me your Holy Spirit for the amendment of my life, and bring me to life everlasting. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. Through the Holy Spirit, we are cleansed and given the power to proclaim the mighty deeds of God, who called us out of darkness into the splendor of light. I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Eternal God, in the sharing of a meal, your Son established a new covenant for all people. And in the washing of feet, he showed us the dignity of service. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these signs of our life in faith may speak again to our hearts, feed our spirits, and refresh our bodies. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
Amen. Our gospel reading today is from the book of St. John. Now, before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He said to Simon Peter, who said to him, he came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, you do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you, for he knew who was to betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man had been, has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you not, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Speak to God. We have been made God's people through our baptism into Christ, living together in trust and hope, we profess our faith. We, we believe, believe in one God, God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, God, not made, of one being with the Father, 
through, through him, him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead in the light of the world to come. Amen. Looking to the cross and called by Christ to love and serve one another, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. God of love, unite your church in its commitment to humble service. Make us your faithful disciples. Speak words of truth and grace through us. Encourage us in self-giving acts of kindness. Let us love one another as you have loved us. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of love, tend to flocks, fields, and vineyards. Bring favorable weather for crops to grow. Guide the hands of those who cultivate, farm, and garden. Let the earth flourish so that all may eat and be satisfied. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of love, you give us a new commandment to have love for one another. We give thanks for organizations that respond to disasters and for agencies that offer relief and humanitarian aid to populations in need. We ask for your special blessing on all frontline medical communities around the world and all religious people. Hear our prayer. God of love, give ear to all who call upon you, body or spirit. We ask that you give comfort to all of us, and provide strength to all those spirits. Provide for those who do not have enough to eat, those who are unemployed or underemployed, and those who rely on the generosity of others. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of love, you invite us to your table of mercy. Heal all divisions between members of this assembly. Extend the hospitality of this table beyond these walls, that your love and welcome be made known to all. God, in your mercy, we offer now these special petitions, whether spoken aloud or in the silence of our home. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of love, glorify your servants who walked by faith in this life and who now feast with you, especially Anne Remy and Myra Richard. We give you thanks for their faith and their witness. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear the prayers of your people, merciful God, for the sake of the one who stretched out his arms on the cross to redeem your people and to reconcile the whole creation. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray together with the words entrusted to us by our Savior. Our Father in heaven, in heaven hallowed, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom, kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me from the words of my groaning? Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer. And by night, but find no rest. Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. In you our ancestors trusted. They trusted and you delivered them. To you they cried and were saved. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and not human, scorned by others and despised by the people. All who see me mock at me. They make mouths at me. They shake their heads and say, commit your cause to the Lord. Let him deliver. Let him rescue the one in whom he delights. Yet it was you who took me from the womb. You kept me safe on my mother's breast. On you, I was cast from my birth. And since my mother bore me, you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near, and there is no one to help. Many bulls encircle me. Strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their mouths at me like a ravening and roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted within my breast. My mouth is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death. For dogs are all around me. A company of evildoers encircles me. My hands and feet have shriveled. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes among themselves. And for my clothing, they cast lots. But you, O Lord, do not be far away. O my help, come quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword, my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the mouth of the lion. From the horns of the wild oxen, you have rescued me. I will tell of your name to my brothers and sisters. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him. Stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. For he did not despise or abhor the affliction of the afflicted. He did not hide his face from me, but heard when I cried to him. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will pay before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nations shall worship before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. To him, indeed, shall all who sleep in the earth bow down. Before him shall bow all who go down to the dust, and I shall live for him. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord and proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying that he has done it. Thank you for being with us in this time of worship tonight. As we have witnessed the last meal of Jesus and the beginning of his passion, we'll invite those of you who need to leave us now to go ahead and do so quietly, but we do invite any of you who can to stay. We'll spend about the next hour or so together in silent prayer with the image of our altar and our pulpit to dwell on, and we uh, encourage you to stay with us and pray. And if you've got some prayers you'd like to share with those of us who are here, feel free to do so by adding them to the chat screen, and we will join you in those prayers. God bless each one of you this holy week. We hope to see you back tomorrow evening at 7 for our Good Friday Stations of the Cross, and again on Sunday morning at 9.30 as we celebrate resurrection. May God be with each and every one of you this evening. Amen.